Hey everybody, Horst here again. Uh, the last one gate fast expand I posted, people were saying, well, some people were saying that they don't really like the lack of robotics facility early on. So I figured I'd post another video. This is a more standard one gate fast expand with a quicker robotics. The guy didn't go banshee harass, but still, quick robotics is not a bad idea. So we'll see how that works out in this game. This guy actually is a 1700 diamond Terran. Uh, considering the fact that he rage quit after his first push was defeated, I gotta say he probably got there on the strength of Terran infantry alone, because it is pretty strong if you don't know how to counter it. But this is just like all the other fast expand builds I've done on my other videos on replays I've posted. You get one gate, build some units out of it, and then you expand. It's not overly complicated, but it's hard for Terran to stop. Yeah, my stalker my first stalker I'm going to make is going to poke out at the uh, Terran. You always want to make your stalker first. You can have a zealot f before the stalker if you have time. But there we go. Stalker comes out. While the stalker's coming out, you build a zealot beca uh, because a stalker by itself is crap against marauders, but a stalker with a zealot is actually pretty good. You poke up there, see what the Terran is doing. You check to see what he was building as a barracks. So now I know that he has heavy infantry in this build. But after you have your one zealot and one stalker, another stalker on the way, you can expand. Throw a couple of pylons down so you don't get supply blocked. Then you want to throw down four, three or four warp gates very quickly. Now, as I've said before, you can actually hold off Terran 3 racks aggression with this build. If you're quick enough getting those warp gates up, you can usually warp in troops fast enough to hold off whatever he's pushing you with. Now, he doesn't opt to go for aggression with the 3 racks. He uses 3 racks into an expand, which is actually a pretty good idea. The Terrans that give me the most problems are the ones that expand and don't try to push me, because after the push on me fails, and I'm on 2 bases and they're on 1, I'm at a huge advantage. If they start off on 2 bases and I'm on 2 bases, it's a much more level playing field, and as we'll see, in this game, the food count for both players remains relatively even the whole time. So, we both are macroing pretty much on the same level. Uh, one second. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, he expands, builds his scrap, gets more marauders, more marines. Most Terran just do more of the same. Marines, marauders, spam them. It's pretty good. But after your expand is up, around 7.30 or so, you start a robotics facility, so you can get an observer out quickly. Now if we go back to my perspective only, I did send a suicide probe in there, I saw his expansion, I saw his uh, marines and marauders, so I know what he's doing, I don't really need the observer, so rather than waste my gas on an observer, I'm going to build a robotic support bay as soon as possible, because I need some kind of area of effect weapon to kill masses of infantry, which I know he's going to have coming soon. I mean, as good as uh, Protoss tier 1 ground infantry is, you can't really stop a full-on Terran Marine Marauder medevac push with just ground infantry. You need Colossus, you need Templar, you need something more than just infantry. Now, one good idea is you build like a scout pylon out in front. This has pretty good vision of down here and pretty good vision of this path here, so if he comes to attack my base, I'll be able to see it. There's nothing worse than just doing something over here, macroing something, and all of a sudden a thousand Stin Marines rush in and you're completely unprepared for it. So, because I'll have that pylon there, I'll be able to spot him when he comes out to attack me. Now, I'm planning on building another pylon here, but his marines see my probe and kill it. Another pylon here would be a good idea, that way it would give me complete vision, so he wouldn't be able to surprise me at all. But, around this time, also get uh, Twilight Council, Zealot Legs plus Colossus is going to pretty much be GG for any kind of Terran infantry push. Once you have Legs and Colossus, they really need to start massing the Vikings to kill your Colossus because they can't rely on Marauders to kill the Colossus with the leg speed there because the Zealots will block the Marauders from getting back to the Colossus quickly enough that they won't be able to snipe the, uh, the Colossus out. Now, because the positions are, no are very close and I can't really expand here, this is when I normally take my third expand around 11 minutes when I'm doing my fast expand strategy. So I'll send this probe out here, he'll expand to here. It's nothing too off the wall, but it's a little out of the way. It's a little harder to defend over here, but warp gates usually 
make it a little easier with that. In effect, Colossus can just walk up and down the cliffs here. So I can get Colossus support over to this base pretty quickly if it needs it. He's scouting with his factory, just letting me know he's not going to do any kind of uh, tank push, I guess. Thanks for letting me know that. Whatever. <laughs> not that tanks are useful in PvZ. PvP. PvT. God damn. Because of all the uh, zealots, which are kind of good against tanks. Now I have my second Colossus coming out. Leg speed is about to finish. You can see the replay is almost over. Yeah, the arm, my army is pretty much complete now, and you can see he's starting to push out with a rather scary looking Marine Marauder Medevac ball. He has, uh, what is that, 16 plus 5, 21 Marauders, and a slightly less scary mar amount of Marines. Pop the Guardian Shields, the Colossus go to town, the Zealots charge forward. One Colossus gets slant before I can pull it back, but you want to pull the Colossus back whenever possible because if he focus fires on the Colossus, his troops will just follow in hopelessly, and they'll be cut down by the Zealots as they're running around trying to get in range of the Colossus. But the Colossus just melts through everything with the aid of the other Zealots. And as you can see, the food count is now horribly in my favor. That was pretty much his only hope. He made no attempt to back off after he saw that battle was losing. And there he gets wiped out. And then there's the Rage Quit. It's people like this that say Protoss is imbalanced because they rely entirely on one push, they attack, move, and it usually wins. And when it stops winning, Protoss must be imbalanced. Well, there you have it. Protoss are imbalanced. Uh, enjoy crushing noob Terrans like this, who apparently can make up the 700 diamond. Have a good day, guys.